Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark, and welcome to my studio. What have I got for you, lovely lot, today? Well, today we're going to have a go at painting three loose watercolour exercises. Now, this isn't just about painting loose. This is also about practising your water-to-paint ratios, which is vitally important if you want to progress in watercolour. Now, in my beginner's watercolour class, it's usually for the first week. We don't try and paint anything in particular. We just experiment with the paint lots of splatting around, lots of adding water, taking water away, really just seeing what the paint does under different circumstances. So today it's going to be nice and stress-free, no drawing required. The first tutorial is going to take two minutes, the second one three minutes, and the fourth one four minutes. Well now, before we start, I want to just make a quick shout out to young Luca. Now I had a lovely comment from his mum here on YouTube saying that her seven-year-old son watches every week and paints along. And I think that's marvellous. I think that's fantastic to think that there's some youngsters out there watching as well as some of us more mature people, shall we say. So cheers, Luca. So let's get going, shall we? Okay, so on all three exercises today, I'm using a fairly small sheet. It's only a five by seven. It's Fabriano Artistico, 100% cotton, and it's on a block, so it won't need stretching, but any decent watercolor paper will do. And just one brush from my range, just a number 12 round. And for my colors today, well, I'm just gonna use what I've got left on my palette and see what happens. Okay, so just before we start the first demo, I wanted to show you a couple of four minute practices that I did. Now, these are the sort of things that I get my beginner students to practice, just to play around with the paint, experimenting with water to paint ratios without putting any pressure of it looking like anything in particular. Okay, for this first exercise, it's gonna be all about your water to paint ratio, and I'm gonna try and complete it in under two minutes. This whole demo will be done in real time. So I'm starting off with a very watery wash of any bright pink, I think this is magenta. Then I'm dropping in a much stronger consistency into the bottom half. And just simply chucking in some clean water along the top here. A bit of madness here with some splatting, just experiment and have fun. Don't worry about it trying to look like anything at all. Here again, straight into the wet, a very strong consistency almost pure paint. A nice watery green, any green will do, and just knock it into the pink to let the colours blend together. A few little flick strokes here, again all using just one brush. Just throw caution to the wind. This doesn't have to look like any particular flower, it's just about learning what the paint does. And if you never paint this quickly again, it doesn't matter. You would have still learnt something. I love the way that pink is slowly flowing down that bottom leaf. I've added some cobalt blue into the mix here, just to get a darker value. Now I'm purposely creating uneven drying times by dropping in some blobs of clean water. Should get some lovely cauliflowers. Exercises like this are so useful in understanding what the paint does. And if it's a great big mess, so what? You don't need to show anyone. Now that's totally dry, look at all these lovely little happy accidents I got without even trying, but just letting the paint paint itself. There we go, all done in under two minutes. So before we start, this is a painting from a previous tutorial, link above if you haven't seen it, where I've used a lot of the techniques shown in this three minute landscape, but obviously this one is a little more refined. Off we go. This is gonna be very loose and impressionistic, and I'm starting off just by using some clean water. Straight in with a very watery mix of Payne's Gray. And I haven't really got any plan here. I'm just gonna see what unfolds. Thank you. 
and I've picked up a bit of burnt sienna on my brush, but I think that's all going to work well. So here, straight into the wet, a really nice thick consistency of Payne's Grey. These could be some trees in the distance, who knows. And here, with quick broad strokes, I'm just mixing on the paper some of the Payne's Grey with the Burnt Sienna, leaving lots of nice little white gaps. Again, this is a great exercise in dropping in stronger and weaker consistencies of paint. A nice thick blob of burnt sienna here, but you could use any colour. And all of this stage is definitely wet in wet. Lean water here just to help the paint flow. And I've just had a mad thought, let's put some table salt just sprinkled in here in the foreground. And again, if this looks nothing like a landscape, I'm really not worried. And let's just splatter in some burnt sienna straight into those wet washes. So next I'm going to let that dry and then paint in some very watery yellow ochre in some vertical bands, which hopefully should represent some reflections in the water. Then some darker values straight in wet and wet. And you can see there in the foreground the interesting effects that have been created by the salt. I'm just lifting out here with a damp brush the suggestion of a sheen in the water. And there we go, all done. A great little exercise in under three minutes. Does it look like landscape? Not really, but that's not the point. So here is another previous tutorial, a link above if you haven't seen it, based on a painting by John Singer Sargent, and I've used a very similar approach to the windows and arches shown in this painting. So in this last exercise, this is all about painting the suggestion of detail without painting detail. And hopefully it's going to resemble one of those doors that's often found in the walls in Venice, using to start with a very watery Payne's Grey. And again, there's no drawing involved at all. So the first thing I'd recommend is to use a bigger brush than you'd normally use because it just stops you fiddling and putting in that detail. And with this one, I'm trying to complete it in under four minutes. And here I'm just adding in a little bit of warmth with some yellow ochre. I think if you time yourself to do something like this in four minutes, then you're just forced not to paint any of that detail in. So if that door merges into that side wall, then so be it. I'm really not trying to square things up and make things too neat and precise. And a nice deep shadow going in here, wet in wet. couple of steps here, just two brush strokes. And a few little loose squiggles here to suggest a bit of filigree. A 
Right, so when that's dry, I'm coming back in with the smallest amount of detail, always trying to paint things with one brush stroke if I can. Slightly darker shadows here, just for the merest suggestion of detail. There we go, all done. And I just think it's got that little bit more life and character in it than something that I may have painted in, say, an hour. Well, I hope you enjoyed that and you'll give all three of those a go. Remember, no pressure, just experiment with the paint. You can learn so much that way. And please don't forget to like, subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment, do read every single one, can't always reply to them all. And of course, I look forward to seeing you all again next week for another Watercolour Wednesday. Cheers now, everyone. <laughs>